Welcome to the Cinch SPFL Scottish Football Roundup, bringing you all the best bits from the weekend's football in the Cinch Championship, League One and League Two. Coming up... Cardiff City Lonies shine as Dunfermline pick up a huge win in Glasgow on Friday evening. Curtis Roberts scores a screamer as Alloa continue their excellent run with a big win in Hamilton. And League 2's bottom side Clyde thrash league leader Stenhouse Muir at Oakle View. The weekend's action got underway at Four Hill on Friday evening. Partick Thistle thought they had taken the lead in the first 12 minutes when Brian Graham put the ball in the net. But Graham's goal was ruled out for an offside in the build-up. Thistle remained on top in the early going. Graham again denied here, but this time by the palms of Dennis Mehmet. The home side kept on creating chances in the first half. Kerr McEnroy seeing one blocked on the line and cleared by the Dunfermline defence. The opening goal would arrive for the Jags on the half hour mark, a header from Luke Macbeth being guided home by Graham for 1-0 to the home side. Thistle's top scorer bagging his 17th in all competitions this season. But Thistle's lead would last just 7 minutes. Josh Edwards powerful strike being parried into the path of Malachi Fagan Walcott who levelled things up. The on-loan defender with his second goal in as many games for the Pars. Dunfermline carried their forward momentum into the second half. Matty Todd seeing a header crash back off the post. Todd though wouldn't take long to get another sight of goal. The midfielder beating Thistle's offside trap in the 55th minute before staying composed and making it 2-1. An excellently timed run from the midfielder, with a classy touch and finish to boot. And just four minutes later, the home side thought they'd levelled things up once more when Graham knocked the ball beyond Mehmet. But eventually, referee David Monroe ruled the goal out for what he believed to be an offside. And from there, Dunfermline would go on to hammer home their advantage. Xavier Benjamin making it 3-1 in the 65th minute. The on-loan Cardiff City man with his first professional goal. Thistle continued to battle late into the game, but were unable to reduce the deficit. James McPake's side with a big result on the road. Sulphur smell drifts over Tanadice and the misty, smoky, hazy view clears as oh. Molt knocks down to Cujo who's into the box straight away, early shot that will go wide of the far post. Movement coming in the middle but it's gone short instead to Turner. Joe Scott gives it now to Dom Thomas, now it's Longridge, left edge of the area, gets the ball across, it's spilled by Walton and knocked in by Payton. Queen's open the scoring at Tardice for the second time this season. Just past the 22 minute mark. Now Scott in the burst forward. Finds Thomas. Support arriving. It's Longridge. Helps it on. Peyton with a chance again. And it's blocked this time. Goes forward. Looking for Turner. Deflection on it by the boot of Kujo. And it breaks to Good Gallagher. Right forward. No flag against Tony Watt. who plays it in low. Fotherham's effort. Tipped over well by Callum Ferry. Holt feels it. It's taken quickly by Holt! Into the top corner! Little run up, little back lift. But that didn't matter. The ball ends up in the top corner. No chance for Callum Ferry. Molt controlled on the thigh inside to Cujo. That's a good ball. Gets it out to Sybil. Sybil 30 yards out. Goes beyond Longridge into the D and a pass another one. Still, it's Craig Sybil. Tries to bend one. And it's tipped around the post by Ferry. Opportunity for Craig Sullivan, then the doors were closed, but he fashioned the shot in the end. Deep corner to Holt. 
He heads back in, what knows it down, it's knotted in by Tilson! From close range is Jordan Tilson, who gets his first United goal! And the home side are in front before half-time. Nick in and win it back, but United now move forward, fothering up. Surely that's a full reverie. No free kick oh. given. United win it back though through Moult. Now it's Watt, 25 yards out. Shot whistles wide of Ferry's right-hand post. 13 yards, 14 yards out. And free kick is taken and it's beaten away by the fists of Jack Walton. So a great ball. Clears and finds Middleton. For the moment it's three on two. Middleton forces Grieve a bit wide on the right, but he's got options in the middle. Two tangerine shirts in the middle, pulls it back to Middleton, onto the left foot, strike! Yes! And gives United the cushion of a two-goal lead. Glenn Middleton left out for the first time from the starting lineup this season. Wraith travelled to Somerset Park, looking to build upon last weekend's win over Dundee United. Zach Rudden got the Rovers off to a flyer, scoring after just five minutes. The striker opening the scoring for the second game running. But Wraith's lead would only last six minutes. A free kick not fully dealt with, allowing Roy Silla to turn home an equaliser for the home side. A first league goal of the season for the Albanian midfielder. Dylan Easton returned to the Rovers starting 11 for the trip to Somerset. He almost restored Wraith's lead, but was denied by the crossbar. The away side though would find themselves ahead at the break. Lewis Vaughan with an excellent piece of finishing in first half stoppage time to make it 2-1. The striker notching his 12th since championship goal of the campaign. Wraith kept on top after the break, Vaughan going close to making it 3-1 but kept out by a flying stop from young goalkeeper Joshua Clark. Ayr went close to making it 2-2 when Sean McGinty rose highest in the Rovers box, but again the woodwork came into play. And another defender would go close soon after, Jack Sanders being kept out by a fingertip save from Kevin Dabrowski. Air kept pushing for a leveller late on. Anton Dowd seeing this one flash wide of the mark. But the day belonged to Rovers. Another big win for the promotion hopefuls. Morton aimed to keep up their recent hot streak at home to Airdrie. The home side came flying out the traps with George Oakley opening the scoring after just nine minutes. Oakley continues to impress in this revitalised Morton team. And things would get even better for Dougie Emery's team just two minutes later. Michael Garrity's stunning volley doubling Morton's advantage in the 11th minute. An excellent finish which gave the keeper no chance. Airdrie began to create chances towards the end of the first half. Aaron Taylor Sinclair heading this one over the top. Former Morton man Charlie Telfer is always a bright spark in midfield for the Diamonds. His effort though, easily gathered by Ryan Mullen. Morton began to regain control after the break and could have made it 3-0, but Jai Katongo's header cracked off the crossbar. The search for a third goal went on for the hosts. Robbie Crawford unable to squeeze this one through a sea of bodies following a corner kick. But Airdrie hadn't given up hope of a late comeback. 88 minutes on the clock when Callum Fordyce popped up with a thumping header to half the deficit. Though it wasn't enough. Morton hanging on for another big win at Capilo. Gayfield was the venue for this crucial battle at the bottom of the table. Our both started brightly, with Kyle Robinson threatening the Cali goal early on. 
On loan Dundee man Cami Kerr was on target for Cali in last weekend's draw with Partick Thistle. He went close to making it 2-2 two two here. Cameron Harper is always a threat on the left-hand side for the Cali Jags. He tried to pick out the top corner with a curling effort, but missed the target. A big chance would arise for our broth at the end of the first half, but David Gold's eventual effort was unable to threaten the Cali goal. Charlie Riley will be keen to make an impact during his lone stint at our broth. He went close to marking his debut for the Lichties with a goal after the break. It took until the 82nd minute for the game's opening goal to arrive. A corner kick eventually breaking to Adam McKinnon, whose backheeled finish put our broth a goal up. The Ross County Loney getting his first goal since October 2022. From here, Cali pressed hard in search of a leveller. Alex Samuel with a huge chance in the area, which he blazed over the top. And the next big chance would come to Kerr in the box after great play down the right, but his shot curled agonisingly wide of the post. But Cali persisted in attack and finally got the reward in the 94th minute. Harper's effort from outside the area sneaking past Max Boric to make it 1-1. Duncan Ferguson's side leaving it late to snatch a point in Angus. Here's a look at the latest standings in the Cinch Championship after the weekend's action. It's as you were at the top of the league after wins for both Dundee United and Wraith Rovers. Morton closed the gap between themselves and third-placed Partick Thistle to two points after a big home win, while Dunfermline jumped up to sixth place after a massive victory at Fur Hill on Friday evening. One of Cinch League One's most informed sides travelled to Hamilton on Saturday afternoon. The Wasps applying early pressure, with Ethan Sutherland testing Dean Linus. Ackies have struggled for form in recent weeks, but Kevin O'Hara has been a consistent threat. He went close to an opener with this deflected strike. Aki's chances were fairly limited in an even first half. Ben Williamson going close to curling one in from range here. Williamson continued to threaten towards the end of the first period, this strike being well kept out by the Alawa defence. Alawa are a side with plenty of aerial threats from set pieces, defender Morgan Neal going close to scoring after the break. The opening goal took until 58 minutes to arrive but was well worth the wait. Curtis Roberts with an excellent turn and a thumping strike to open the scoring for Alawa. A first goal in Alawa colours for the midfielder. But the lead wouldn't last long. Aki's with a quick fire response as former Alawa man Ewan Henderson headed in the equaliser just three minutes later. A pinpoint header from the talented forward. Alawa though weren't happy to settle with a point. Taylor Stephen weaving his way through the defence, but pulling his shot wide. But the Wasps kept on pushing and found the crucial goal on 84 minutes. Connor Salmon's flick on finding John Robertson at the back post, who made it 2-1. A massive goal from the Clackmannanshire favourite. Hamilton kept battling late into the game for an equalising goal, but were unable to find it. A huge result for Alawa as Aki's fell to their third straight defeat. This is out. Unless Faris Patterson does well to Tidza. Tidza looking over for Johnson. Flag stays down. Johnson gets the cross in. Cunningham's there. 
It's a great save from the keeper. Johnson plays it out to Babbage. Babbage fancies the one-on-one. -on -one. Does well, gets the cross in at the front post. And it's wide. Taken short. Tries towards the back post. It's headed. It's off the line by Gurley, but it's in. Falkirk take the lead from the set piece. It's off the line. Tries to flick on. Some afters. What a joke. Falkirk. Great other keeper. Play switched. Going to substitute looking to work his way in. And it's another save off the goal line. Dangerous as Falkirk can now break away. Over looking for Ross. Has some space. He'll try and cut in. He does and it comes off of Billy and Lewis and straight in the hands of Gurley. The Beanos welcomed Edinburgh City to Fourth Bank on Saturday afternoon. The away side starting on the front foot, with Malik Zaid firing just wide of the post. The opening goal would arrive in the 31st minute, with the home side taking the lead. Experienced defender Paul McLean forcing the ball home from a corner kick. The defender taking a sore one, but finding the net. Chances continued to arrive for Sterling in the first half. McLean going close to a spectacular second, with Ruri Adams making a top save. Into the second period, and City were reduced to 10 men on 47 minutes. Frankie Dean shown a straight red card for a foul on Josh McPake. Saturday's match was McPake's debut for the Beanos. He marked the occasion with a cracking free kick goal in the 57th minute. Brilliant strike, which gave Adams no chance. And Sterling would grab a third goal on 75 minutes. Another free kick, this time headed home by McLean for his second of the game. A pinpoint delivery and a fine glancing header. Despite being a man light, City kept on fighting. Substitute Brody Devine crashing the crossbar with a first-time effort late on. Sterling, though, weren't quite done yet. Need play in the box to work an opportunity, with Lewis Milne just unable to finish. But there would be a fourth goal for the Beanos. 89 minutes on the clock when Josh Cooper's neat pass found Dale Hilson, who squeezed the ball home for his first Sterling goal. An excellent day at the office for Darren Young's men. Annan made the long journey north to the Balmoral Stadium on Saturday. Willie Gibson going close to producing a moment of magic early on. Remarn Burrell's goals have kept Cove in with a shout of the playoffs this season. 30 minutes on the clock when the striker's prodded effort was adjudged to have crossed the line by the officials. Burrell showcasing incredible striker's instinct for this one. The hosts went close to making it two shortly after the break. Clever thinking from Fraser Fivey, but Mitch Meganson unable to finish. Tommy Goss continues to be a huge goal threat for Annan. 
but he couldn't quite keep this header down. But the goal would eventually come for the Galabankis. On loan attacker Michael Nwayeni getting his second in two games on 53 minutes. An excellent strike from the Newcastle United prospect. From here, chances began to appear at both ends of the pitch. Cove striker Meganson will be disappointed he didn't find the net here. Annan's next break would come from a defensive mix-up from Cove. Goss going clean through on goal, but denied by Ballant Demas. Josh Walker made himself an Annan hero against Hamilton a fortnight ago, but couldn't repeat the feat this time round. It felt as though the next goal would be decisive, and so it proved. Cove's Josh Kerr finding himself in the right place at the right time in the 86th minute to win the game for his side. Paul Hartley's men with their first win since late December. The BBC Alba cameras were at Palmerston for this one on Saturday evening. Blair Lyons looking most likely to score from Montrose early on. While at the other end, it was Gavin Riley showing early promise. Great running from the striker, with his eventual goal-bound effort cleared by Aidan Quinn. But it would be another Queen's attacker who would find the first goal. Lee Connolly putting the home side a goal up in the 26th minute. Connolly's strike squeezing beyond Cammy Gill from a tight angle. Montrose believed they should have had a penalty towards the end of the half. A goal-bound effort from Michael Gardine being blocked on the line, seemingly from the hand of Max Kilsby. Montrose carried their momentum into the second period. Andrew Steves having a pop from inside the area, but firing just off target. But the equaliser was just around the corner. Gardine's pinpoint free kick on the hour mark making it 1-1. An excellent strike which gave Gordon Botterill no chance. and Montrose would have the chance to take the lead soon after. Referee Callum Scott awarding the away side a penalty on 71 minutes. A penalty which was confidently powered home by Mo hero Graham Webster for 2-1. Webster has been in fine form in front of goal in recent weeks. And the penalty drama wasn't quite finished. Lyons jinking his way into the Queen's box before being filled by F.A. Ambrose just four minutes later. Another spot kick to Montrose. Webster stepped up to the plate again. Different side, same outcome. Montrose's number seven bagging his fifth goal in as many games. Queens began to show signs of life again late on. Substitute Joel Mumbongo pulling a goal back for the Dunhamers in the 81st minute. But it was too little, too late. Montrose heading back to Angus with all three points. Here's a look at the latest standings in the Cinch League 1 table after another busy weekend. Falkirk extended their lead at the top of the table to 17 points with a narrow 1-0 win at Kelty. Alloa reduced the gap between themselves and second placed Ackies to 7 points with a huge win in Hamilton. While Montrose remain in a strong position in the playoff hunt after an impressive away victory in Dumfries. Adam Brown assisted Buchanan's opener against Clyde here in September. Four goals from that combination, the highest in the league. It's Aitken this time, and it's tipped onto the bar. Only 
15 wins in 69 before today. And here's Alan, and this is the chance. Big statement of print. There's a lovely ball into the path of O'Reilly. Can he get there? Down he goes. But Yates collects the scraps. And it's into the net anyway. Ewan O'Reilly gets his second in two games. And Stenhouse Muir are in front. Overseeing the situation. It is Scully and, and it's straight in. Liam Scullion. And Meekins missed it. And Allen's in. And Allen scores at the second attempt. What a turnaround in the first half here. Be much improved in the second half if they're going to try and get something from this match. Anderson into Brown. And there's the effort, and it's drawn another excellent save. And Curry's done well, and Line is in space. Curry finds him. And there's the third for Clyde. Rennie with the touch. And a bully, we make it look so, so simple. That's a good ball into the path of Allen, and he's going to get there. Just couldn't pick out the supporting figures. Rennie thought about it, thinks about it again, and fires an absolute peach past Jameson. Yeah, it's a fantastic strike. Everything else you could possibly need if Stenner and are going to come back from this. And it's into the path of Ballantyne, who's got another. Good feet from King. And it's to the back post, and there's another. Allen on the score sheet again. Maybe when there was a couple of goals, just a state of shock. And here's Rodden. Good save from Kinnear. Yeah, it's a good play from Rodden, sort of fake the, fake the pass, and then turned and was able to get a shot away. And it's a Bonnie Rigg made the short trip to Ainsley Park for this League 2 clash. They had defending to do early on, as Bradley White threatened for Spartans. Blair Henderson's goals have played a key role in Spartans' playoff push this season. The talented striker tucking away his 14th league goal of the season on 22 minutes. A brilliant piece of close control, followed by a classy finish. Cammy Russell is another player who has stood out for Spartans this term. The winger going close to making it 2-0 here. And the home side would double their lead on 25 minutes. Ayrton Sonker continuing his recent scoring run with a towering header. The centre-back with his third goal in his last two outings. Bonnie Rigg showed signs of an attacking spark towards the end of the half. Angus Mailer calling Blair Carswell into action here. But a clear sight of goal would take until the second half to arrive. The away side awarded a penalty in the 56th minute for a foul spotted by referee Jordan Curran. And as he so often has this season, Neil Martinuk slotted away the spot kick to pull a goal back. Game on with just under 40 minutes remaining. But it was Spartans who would go on to create the better chances. James Cragen denied a spectacular free kick goal by a top save from Paddy Martin. And the home side kept hunting down another goal late into the game. Reese Armstrong being set up by Henderson, but again Martin producing a fine stop. 2 1 Spartans, the final score. One of the best sights I've seen at Football Park. Corner taken quickly. Grant returns it to Dylan Forrest. He plays it into the middle. 
Up go the heads. Oh. And oh. That, that actually yeah, it was come off the so now still have a couple of men back. Ekropont then swinger right into the danger area. Oh, Craig Ross and Craig and Ross. Craig Ross. Home. Craig Ross. As we approach five opener. minutes. What do you make of that, Brian? Well, no less than destruction are reserved. They've been absolutely excellent the first five minutes. Not content there. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He can do that, though, the boy Ross, you know. But uh, he, can, he can float it again. Now, that's a lovely ball from Sean Crichton. And that is a great finish by Michael Ruth. Sonra cut open yeah. right up the middle. A great ball, right? You know, eighth minute. Yep. Michael Ruth. So Wilson with the corner, and that was a, oh, another free header. Fantastic! I think yeah. it's Tom Orr off the line, isn't it? Off the it? line, but Orr, Michael wow. Ruth, free header. He's got Pinacello on the overlap here. He comes. He's going to cross. Gets it in the middle, uh, and oh, it's still it's the danger still there though. Tony Wallace, is it? It is Wallace. And he's he oh, scores. That's, yeah, that's, that's poor defending. So now just yeah. not yeah. clearing the lines that again. Was they, gave, they gave him all the time in the world, they eh, lost. Yeah, Wallace could pick yeah. his spot really. It was deflected in, but that's a Tony yeah. Wallace yeah. goal all day long. The, the Plays it to the left. Blair sends it to Wallace. First touch is decent. McQueen's there, but Wallace still has the ball. He gets the cross in, and that's a goal. No, oh, should have been. That should have been a goal. It should have been. Yeah, scores elsewhere. Brian Peterhead beating Elgin, Spartans beating Bonnie Rig, and Stennis Muir beating Clyde. Oh well, all the, the four now, teams winning. Danger here though. Oh, and that wasn't far away at all. Chris Johnson returns it. Now gets it back again. Johnson gets the cross in. Oh, how unlucky! He was, he was on was side. That? He was on side. Oh, see again! The Dumbartons are living there. a charmed life, I'll tell you. Peterhead aimed to pick up their first win since late January against Elgin City. Kieran Shanks making his presence felt in attack early on. Deshaun Golding has been excellent for Elgin since arriving on loan from Cove Rangers. He looked bright in attack for the Black and Whites. But it would be the home side who would make the breakthrough after just 12 minutes. An excellent touch and finish from Shanks, making it 1-0. A great first touch, only eclipsed by the finish. At the other end though, Golding continued to look bright. The Elgin number 9 showing his class in the 26th minute with a fantastic equalising goal. A brilliant run and excellent composure shown for the finish. And Golding could have had a second goal before the break. The attacker with a great turn in the box, but the shot well blocked on the line. Golding's attacking endeavour continued into the second half, this effort clipping the outside of the post after a well-timed run. Russell Dingwall is another player who continues to shine for Elgin. He went close to making it 2-1, but couldn't quite find the net. Peter Head's best chance of finding a winner lay with Rory McAllister and strike partner Shanks, but neither could find a way through late on. A point apiece at Balmour. And again, he beats Newton. He's then, oh, he's lost it. He's five playing themselves into a bit of bother here. Might be a chance, oh, and Alan Fleming. In. Oh, it's in! Well, out of nothing really. Matthew Allen with a header. Flash, touch on the chest. Gets the ball in. Trouton! And he get another goal! Oh, what a save! What a save oh. from McCallum! Below the top, lines the target. Send it away. Fash trying to get to the seconds. He gets the touch on the chest. Lion leaves it for Fash. 
Sunny Lowell gets his cross in. Trouton's there at the back oh. stick. I think it was just a little bit too high for him and he couldn't keep his header down. He needs a hand and he gets it from McManus. Touch deliver. Uh, Newton's going to go for it. Oh. oh, that wasn't a million miles away. Now they've got a bit of space out wide. Hamilton. Newton, first time ball. Good delivery. Fash. Oh, and is it going to go in? That must be a penalty. Surely, yes. Penalty kick for his five. Troughton sends the keeper the wrong way. He scored for the fourth consecutive home game against Forfar. And it's 1-1. One, one. If it comes from Murdoch. Oh, and it just drops corner. wide. Page was up there, but it's going to be a corner. He's five banging on the door. Now for a look at the latest standings in the Cinch League 2 table. Stenhouse Muir maintain a healthy lead at the top, despite Saturday's heavy defeat. Wins for Spartans and Dumbarton sees the battle for the playoffs continue to heat up, while Clyde are now just 5 points behind 9th place Stranraer after a huge win at Oakleview.